Widely regarded as Japan's culinary capital, Osaka is also known by another nickname, Tenka no Daidokoro, which means the nation's kitchen. And it's not difficult to see why. Osaka has an ultra-vibrant food culture. You'll find delicious grubs everywhere you look. The city is the birthplace of takoyaki and omurice. It's a training ground for the country's most revered chefs, and it plays a vital role in making some of the most celebrated Japanese dishes popular around the world. No wonder Osaka's streets are lined with countless dining spots from sushi kiosks to ramen bars to shabu-shabu restaurants. Hey there, poor traveler! We are Vince and Josh. Over many return trips to Osaka, we have sought out the restaurants and stalls that could give us cheap but unforgettable eats. And in this video, we're sharing with you what we found. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified when we upload new travel videos. I eat at Endo Sushi every time I'm in the city. Every single time. That should tell you how much I enjoy this small and unassuming sushi shop. That, despite being located far from the city's many popular tourist spots. It is almost an attraction in itself with tourists going out of their way to have their own plateful. Endo Sushi has been serving what many consider Osaka's best for over a century. Yep, more than 100 years and they're here to stay. The place has only 5 tables and a short bar so expect to queue up a bit. Immediately upon taking a seat, you will be served a cup of hot green tea together with a hot towelette. On the table are two small porcelain bowls that cradle shoyu and pickled ginger. Don't go looking for wasabi because it's already mixed with rice. Aside from the toppings, this wasabi mixture sets endo apart from other sushi places. It's a perfect blend of saltiness and spice. If you're not a fan, tell the chef or waiter upon ordering so they can create wasabi-less pieces for you. Endo's menu has only a few choices. You get to pick among 4 sets only, each price at around 1,200 yen. And every set is made up of 5 pre-selected pieces but you can have a piece replaced if you like. I have tried all 4 sets and set 1 is, by a mile, the best. It's composed of anago, uni, tai, toro, and hamachi. If you want to try the other plates, don't be shy to order more. It's perfectly normal to have a rack of multiple plates because every piece is just glorious. Because it's located just next to the fish market, they get first dibs on the freshest ingredients and you can taste the freshness with every bite. The closest stations are Noda and Tamagawa. They're very close to each other so just take whatever is more convenient. Toki Sushi If 1,200 yen can treat you to 5 pieces at Endo Sushi, an even smaller amount, just around 1,000 yen can give you a dozen at Toki Sushi. We learned about this through Mark Wiens of Migrationology and we loved it for two things. First, its location. If you're staying around Namba, then this should be within walking distance of your hotel. The other, its affordability. A standard plate here with two pieces of nigiri sushi costs only 150 yen. A more premium sushi like fatty tuna or sea urchin are at 150 yen a piece. But most diners get their assorted sushi plates which cost 730 yen for 8 pieces and 1050 yen for a dozen. We ordered the dozen platter and the waitress served a wooden board that looked almost overflowing with sushi. All 12 of them topped with big cuts of seafood. However, most are crowned with regular toppings like squid, tamago, and regular tuna. If you have more dough to burn, we highly encourage you to try their premium sushi set which will give you all the awesome pieces like uni and toro. Ramen Yashichi This is another scoop we learned from Migrationology. We are here at Yashichi uh, Ramen House. So, every time I'm in the school 13, until 4pm lang sila bukas. Our dinner namin is show you ramen for two. Kasi ito daw yung uh, pinakamasawag nila dito. Like most best kept secrets in Japan, Ramen Yashichi is housed in a humble, compact, dingy hole in a wall that is easy to walk past. We almost did since there was no queue outside it 
pretty unusual for a ramen place that is supposedly one of the best in Osaka, but there is a perfect sensible explanation for it. As soon as we started queuing, we were approached by one of the staff who gave us a number with a small message telling us to come back at the specified time. This way, they won't be creating a long line in front of the shop. But it was mid-afternoon of a weekday so we didn't get to wait much. In 10 minutes, we were inside, trying to figure out the all-Japanese vending machine that takes customers' orders. This chicken-based broth was full-bodied, almost like tonkotsu but creamier. Think of it as the love child of a tonkotsu ramen and the chicken macaroni soup. It's one of those broths that get more flavorful with every spoonful, complementing the sweet marinade of the chashu toppings. Menya Jeroku Try googling best ramen in Osaka and you'll be presented with a gazillion lists prepared by various websites. Menya Jeroku is a staple in these recommendations. Menya Joroku is stopped in a narrow alley in Uranamba, a short walk from many of the key attractions in Namba or the Tonbori. Their specialty is Chuka Soba, a Takaida-style ramen that is characterized by its deep dark broth made with chicken stock and black soy sauce. Most reviews say that despite its color, it is surprisingly light, but I beg to differ. I find it a bit on the heavy side. It has an intense salty flavor with a tinge of sour. That's not a bad thing for me because I like strong, rich taste profiles. Each serving is topped with slices of roasted pork, chopped scallions, bamboo shoots, and a generous dash of black pepper. If your palate fevers the lighter end of the taste spectrum, order Sama Shoyu Ramen. This also uses chicken broth but blended with dried sorry fish stock, creating a light but dynamic flavor. Each bowl also comes with scallions, roasted pork, bamboo shoots, and nori. Hanshin Omeda Main Department Store Snack Park or Hanshin Snack Park for short is a stand-up food court that has been popular especially among locals. Located inside the Hanshin Omeda Main Department Store, it houses over a dozen stalls selling Japanese foodie treats like sushi, takoyaki or snack balls with a bit of octopus, and ikayaki, a crepe-like snack filled with squid bits. <laughs> But what we found most satisfying and filling here was the ramen served by a kiosk called Kadoya Shokudo. Kadoya Shokudo serves traditional ramen with shoyu broth and thin, soft Chinese noodles. As you may have noticed, I'm not a fan of ramen with light broth, but this was a pleasant surprise. The dashi is clear but has the perfect mix of saltiness and umami. It reminded me more of the fishy, immaculate taste of udon broth than ramen. Hokyukuse Omurice has its roots planted in Osaka. In particular, the main branch of Hokyukuse in Shinsaibashi is regarded by many as the first to serve omurice decades ago. Omurice is a simple dish. It's basically omelette and rice but presented in a more creative fashion. Its early incarnations had mushrooms and onions mixed with the rice and served with ketchup, but today it takes many forms. We asked the staff for their best sellers and they pointed to the hashed beef omurice and beef curry omurice. Hence, Vince ordered the two-in-one omurice served with both curry and hashed beef poured on either side. I ordered the more expensive beef stew omurice. This way, we get to try three different variations in one seating. Of the three, I like the hashed beef the most. It was bright and rich. But to be honest, I'd had better versions in other restaurants at a cheaper price. The beef chunks in my beef stew were hard, almost leathery. But I guess the hype is more about its history and ambience than the food. Okonomiyaki Kiji we had just finished checking out the view from Omeda Sky Building's observatory when our grumbling tummies and a quick Google search led us to the door of Okonomiyaki Kiji at the tower's basement food court called Takimi Koji. We were greeted by the staff who gladly ushered us in. Spotting our cameras, he asked if we wanted to sit by the bar, perhaps so we could get better angles. We were there for Okonomiyaki, but he highly recommended the yakisoba. We ended up with both. The chef began creating the dish in front of us. The more they took form, the more we realized that these would be huge pieces, maybe bigger than we can handle. When it was all done, we split both the okonomiyaki and yakisoba in two and evenly distributed the pieces.
Okonomiyaki is Osaka's famous traditional pancake usually made of wheat flour, cabbage, and eggs. Kiji allows you to choose the protein components of the dish, so we opted for a mixture of everything. Bacon, beef, squid. The last piece was a shiso or a perilla leaf. And I'm not really a fan of perilla but Vince is. Kiji's was everything you could hope for in an okonomiyaki. Big, filling, flavorful, and well-seasoned. And because our order sat on the grill the entire time, it remained warm throughout the meal. But that yakisoba totally upstaged the okonomiyaki. The yakisoba had a soft, juicy, but non-soggy texture that was punctuated by the squid, meat, and veggie bits. Kuromon Ichiba Market For almost 200 years, Kuromon Market has been known as Osaka's Kitchen for its almost endless array of gastronomic options ranging from rare fruits to mouth-watering seafoods that you can eat or have prepared on the spot. We stumbled upon it by accident. We didn't realize that the shop where we would be picking up our amazing Osaka Pass is located here. The scent of grilled food and the greetings from sellers filled the air. Although not part of the plan, we ended up digging into some of the delicacies sold here, including seared scallops and sweet potatoes. Compared to other markets I have visited in Japan, Kuroman is actually a bit pricier, but the experience make up for it. They sell items in small servings, which allows visitors to get a taste of a wide variety of products, something that a regular restaurant can't give you. There's just so much to see and taste here. If you want to try Kobe beef, but not flush enough to afford a proper cut, you can get hold of small slices here. Even the deadly fugu or puffer fish is sold in one of the corners. Supermarkets If you're traveling on a shoestring, a good way to save on food is by shopping at a friendly neighborhood supermarket. I do it all the time when I'm staying in Japan for a long time. Supermarkets in Japan sell fresh and cooked food and they are good. Not as good as what you would have at a proper restaurant but way better than what you would expect from supermarkets. Here's a tip. Shop for food past 8 p.m. Because most perishable products like sushi and other cooked meals are put on sale. You can have up to 75% off. If you need more information about traveling around Japan, you'll find comprehensive travel guides with sample itineraries on our website, www.thepoortraveler.net or check out the links in the description. If you have questions, make good use of the comment section below. You can also follow us on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Just look for at the Poor Traveler single L. You may also tune in to the Poor Traveler podcast on Spotify. That's all for now. And remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip worth it!